Sa pong mapagpalang umaga, BCM, raya na naman ay muli magpupuri at mapapasalamat sa Panginoon sa kanyang katakailaan, kanyang kabutihan sa atin sa buong isang linggo. Kaya, tinat, tayo po ay manalangin po na sa dali, pagkatiwala natin na sa Panginoon ang lahat ng ating aawitin para sa Kanya. So, Panginoon, salamat po sa uh, umaga ito, Lord, na pinagkalab niya sa amin. Salamat po, Lord, dahil pinagyan niyo kami ng chance upang magpuri at magpasalamat sa inyo. Patawarin niyo po kami sa aming mga nagawang kasalanan, sa isip, salita at sa gawa, Lord, at nawa, uh, di po maghihad lang yung aming mga karumihan, aming mga nagawang kukulang, upang di namin kayo masamba ngayong umaga sa spirito at katotohanan. We invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in our midst, and we declare that you, will, you are the only one that we will, uh, we will lift, we will, uh, you are the only one that will be lifted up on high. Salamat po, Panginoon, we trust you all of these things. Mapapurihan ka, in Jesus' name, Amen. So tara po, magpuri tayo sa Panginoon. Oh, oh, oh. 
na ito. And ngayon naman, misan pa natin sa Uwita, kung magkita naman ng Uwika na English. So let's sing this song, Shout to the Lord.
opportunity, it's a privilege to worship kayo. Uh, alam namin, Lord, that we have not been so faithful to you. Ang dami po namin pukukulang. And yet, dyan po yung grace nyo. And you're, Lord, you're also teaching us not to abuse your grace. But here we are right now, Lord, humbling down ourselves before you. We hope that you accept us in spite of our uh, unworthiness and unrighteousness. Pero salamat, Lord, dahil we are still free to declare your greatness and to worship you. Kaya, Panginoon, tanggapin niyo po ang pinakamataas na papuri. Salamat ngayon sa umagang ito. And prepare our hearts as well, Lord, sa pakikinig ng inyong mensahe ngayon. Palain niyo po ang aming speaker. Tago niyo po sa inyong likuran at ang inyong mensahe ang siyang mahayag sa aming mga buhay. And Lord, store the message that you have for us this morning in our hearts and help us to apply this, Lord, in our daily life. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Everybody say, Amen. God bless. To God be all the glory. Good morning, brothers and sisters of the BCM family. Greetings and blessings in Jesus' name. Let's look at the new normal, new thinking about guilt. I will explore how is guilt perceived in the Old Testament and then look at guilt in terms of the New Testament to help us explore our new thinking. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your goodness, Lord Jesus. We pray through your Holy Spirit that the message delivered will be the one you would like me to share with our family. I pray, Lord, that you will speak through me and ensure the message is received by the BCM family and they will be able to place this in their way of life and to move forward as we overcome the current difficulties we face with the coronavirus. We pray, Lord, that you will be with us at this time. We pray for your goodness to be showered upon each and every one of us. New thinking about the new normal. Let's look at Leviticus chapter 7, verses 1 to 10. And our sermon is based on this. It says, in Leviticus chapter 7, verses 1 to 10, These are the regulations for the guilt offering, which is most holy. The guilt offering is to be slaughtered in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, and its blood is to be splashed against the sides of the altar. All its fat shall be offered. The fat tail and the fat that covers the internal organs. Both kidneys with the fat on the near loins and the long lobes of the liver, which is to be removed with the kidneys. The priest shall burn them on the altar as food offering presented to the Lord. It is a guilt offering. Any male in a priest's family may eat it, but it must be eaten in the sanctuary area. It is most holy. The same law applies to both the sin offering and the guilt offering. They belong to the priests who make atonement with them. The priest who offers a burnt offering for anyone may keep its hide for himself. Every grain offering baked in an oven or cooked in a pan or on a griddle belongs to the priest who offer it. And every grain offering, whether mixed with olive oil or dry, belongs equally to all the sons of Aaron. A very complex reading for us to try and unpack. But what it is telling us, it's about guilt 
and how we can overcome guilt. It is saying to us that the regulations in the Old Testament is how the priest should conduct the offering which is to be offered to God for recompense and for us to overcome what we have done wrong. It gives clear instructions as how this should be undertaken. It tells about the usage of the fat and that of the meat. How it should be removed, how it should be undertaken. But this is all in context of making atonement, utilizing slaughtered animal. Today, we have overcome that. But we must look at the other aspects of what the Old Testament is telling us. The psalmist, in chapter 32, verse 5, indicates to us, I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgive my guilt of my sin. So the psalmist is very clear. The psalmist acknowledged he has done wrong. And what he's saying is that he will not cover up his guilt but he will repent and seek forgiveness from the Lord because he said he will confess his transgressions the things he has done wrong and that's what we too must do we must confess when we have done some something wrong and the Lord will forgive us of our sin and the guilt what we have committed Further in Psalm chapter 38 verse 4, the psalmist is sharing how he has been overwhelmed by what he has done wrong. He said, my guilt has overwhelmed me like a burden too heavy to bear. So you can see, guilt will wear us down. It is extremely burdensome for us to carry. And it is important that we remember what the psalmist was saying. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, in chapter 6, verse 7, tells us, With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips, your guilt is taken away, and your sins atoned for. So when we confess, it is very clear that our sins will be forgiven. Our guilt is forgiven, whatever we have done wrong. Again, the prophet Jeremiah tells us in chapter 2, verse 22, Although you wash yourself with soap and use an abundance of cleansing powder, the stain of your guilt is still before me, declares the Sovereign Lord. We can try to do good things, to try and overcome what we have done wrong. And that's why the prophet Jeremiah is telling us we can wash ourselves, we can cleanse ourselves, but it does not remove the guilt. It does not remove the sin from us. Unless we come to the Lord, repent of our sin, and that's the only way we can overcome our problems, our difficulties. Further, the prophet Ezekiel tells us in chapter 18, verse 18. Yet you ask, why does the son not share the guilt of his father? Since the son has done what is just and right and has been careful to keep all my decrees, he will surely live. An interesting verse. Why does the son not share the guilt of the father? The reason being, both are individuals and each must pay for what they have done wrong. Each one must seek 
forgiveness from the Lord. The son cannot pay for the guilt or the sin committed by the father. Since the son is doing what is right, he has been very careful to do what is right. And in that way, because he has kept all the Lord's decree, he will surely live. But if the father does not, he will suffer the consequences. So our new thinking, how should we think about sin? Well, it's very clear about the new thinking and the way forward. In Galatians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, Paul writing to the people of Galatia reminds them, Because you are sons, God sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts. The Spirit who calls out, Abba Father. So it's us calling out to the Father that will help us to overcome the difficulty. Why? Because Jesus has paid the price for our sin at Calvary on the cross. So you are no longer a slave but a child of God. So our new thinking should always be is to examine ourselves. Where are we with the Lord? Are we walking with the Lord? Are we doing what the Lord has asked us to do and keeping his commandments? Romans chapter 8 verses 12 to 21 is clear. It helps us to unpack the new way to think about ourselves. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear. So your spirit is not a slave. Your spirit is freed because you have accepted the Lord Jesus. And acceptance is extremely important. Once we have accepted the Lord Jesus, we are a new creation. And the new creation we are tells us about the importance of what, how we should see ourselves. And the importance in seeing ourselves as we are in the Lord is important. Because there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, Jesus overcome. Because Jesus paid the price for our sins. It says in verse 16, The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. So it's clear when Paul was speaking to the Galatians, he's telling them that the Spirit is reminding us we are chosen. We are God's children. And that's our new thinking. All we see ourselves in the light of the Lord Jesus. Now, if we are children, then we are heir, heir to God. So we are selected. Now, if we are children, we are indeed, will share in his suffering. So doing what is right and doing what the Lord has commanded us to do. In verse 18, it says very clearly, I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will, which will be revealed to us. So as we walk with the Lord, the glory is there for us. God's goodness, God's riches. And that's why grace stands for God's riches at Christ's expense. God has paid the price for our sins. Verse 19 reminds us, The creation waits in eager expectation for the Son of God to be revealed. So we must show and we must behave in a Christ-like manner. Doing the things that the Lord has commanded us to do. The greatest command Jesus said he'd given to us is to love 
the Lord their God with all the heart, the soul and the mind. Likewise, it's to love your neighbor as yourself. So the importance is that of love. Love for God and love for our neighbors. For the creation of God, which is you and me, was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one subjected to it. So it's us who will choose to be defeated. We are the ones because we have already been chosen because we have accepted the Lord. And the new creation itself will be liberated from its bondage. Acceptance of the Lord Jesus to any problems, difficulties we are encountering at any time. Seeking. In Romans chapter 8 verses 1 and 2, we are free from sin, guilt and shame. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set us free from the law of sin. There are some conditions to which we must follow. We need to do what the Lord is asking us. As a habit we have got, we tend to forget that the Lord sees all what we are doing. And because he tells us in this verse, it sums up all what is required for us to do. Condemnation on the religious world which tries to feel on the basis of their own ability and they are right with God. They do not need Christ. We can never be right on our own. We need the Lord Jesus. The person who attempts to say that they are right with God on the basis of something which they have done or the goodness which they have achieved is trying to stand before God in a righteous manner on their own. Not God's righteousness. This is entirely different following what the Lord is saying. The recognition that we have as Christians, if we ever to commend on this statement, there is no condemnation, is to start off by realizing that before Jesus, we must be free from any of our wrong ways. We must be more Christ-like in our manner. The Lord came not only to get rid of the sin, he came to pay the price for us. Jesus, because he has come, has made it possible for us to have life. That's why there is no condemnation for any one of us who accepted the Lord Jesus. We are driving a hard bargain if we believe we can do things on our own. We must trust the Lord. The Lord is the one who has paid the price for us. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1 reminds us it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. No matter what people say to us or do to us, provided we are walking with the Lord Jesus and thinking in that manner, we will overcome any difficulty we face. Nothing is impossible for God. We can live with profound peace in our heart and mind. In Psalm chapter 103 verses 11 to 14 tells us, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgression from us. As a father he has compassion on his children, 
So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are from dust. Very important for us to follow exactly what the psalmist has done. We repent and God will forgive us our sins. Very clearly as he says, as far as the east is from the west. And he has removed all that transgressions once we have repented of what we have done wrong. Because God is our Father. Jesus is our Father. Abba Father. Cry out to him in your desperation. No matter what the difficulty. He knows us better than we know ourselves. And he knows where we come from. We were all created from dust. And we are created in his own image and likeness. Romans chapter 8 verse 15 reminds us, For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship, and by him we cry. Excellent words. Paul writing to the Romans to remind them how to think. So although we are facing difficulties in our current situation, turn to God's words. As Paul reminded the Romans, for you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again. You did not, brother and sister of the BCM family, made a slave to fear. You have overcome all the difficulties because you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. So you are not condemned in any way. You are a new creation. We are free from sin, free from guilt, free from shame. And we can live pro profoundly in the knowledge and understanding and in solid peace with the Lord. And we can experience intimacy with the Father, our Father, Abba Father, accepting the Lord Jesus. We are free from the legalism, Jesus told us. He has paid the price. He has reminded us in Romans chapter 8 verses 1 to 4. We are not condemned. We are free from condemnation. We are a new creation and we are free to joyfully accept what the Lord is telling us. No difficulties. Accept clearly what the Lord is saying and get away from any reckless confidence. Trusting in the Lord is the answer. Romans chapter 8 verses 24 and 25 tells us, for in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he has already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So we need to wait very patient from it. If we fail in one, the law reminds us that we have to, as Christians, turn to the Lord. Turn to the Lord because he will make us righteous. Relating to the law, man-made law, to overcome our difficulties will surely lead us to failure. The word is truer than our feelings, praise God. And it is more powerful than the law. Because God's word is what is important. Remember what it says in Romans 8, 1-4. There is no condemnation. Condemnation means two things. If you stood before a judge and received condemnation, it would mean that you have received a sentence. You are guilty. You have done wrong. But it will also mean that you would receive a penalty. 
you would then, from the sentence, move to serving out some of the exactation that the law required of you. Condemnation before God means a guilty sentence, and it means an exaction of a penalty being separated from God. And that separated, if we do not accept what the Lord is saying, is eternal damnation. So we are the ones who would condemn ourselves. So we must always remember, Jesus came to set us free from guilt and sin and the power of sin. The fact there is no condemnation in Christ by accepting Jesus. There is no condemnation. Contrast with unbelieving persons. They have been condemned. And they will pay the price on the day of judgment. Because God will judge them according to their doings and their manner in which they actually do things. Matthew chapter 6 verse 34 tells us, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So let us not worry about tomorrow. God's provision is enough for us. And it's important that remember, we must feel alive in the Lord Jesus. You died to your old self. You rose again as a new creation when you were baptized, making that public declaration that you are a believer in Christ. We have been risen with Christ. We looked at the theme very clearly. And do always remember that we must dedicate ourselves to the Lord at all times. Look upon the cross. And when we look upon the cross, accept God. Jesus, through his sacrifice, we are with him on the cross. We are with him in the grave. And we are with him in the resurrection. So we are with the Lord in all what he has done for us. Because we have accepted him. And again, we must not put ourselves down. We must move forward. In Psalm 46, it reminds us who we are and what God is to us. He is our refuge and our strength. And he's ever present to help us in our trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth may give way and the mountains may fall into the heart of the sea. No matter what difficulties, walking with the Lord will ensure that we overcome our difficulties in the Lord. Let me take you back to Romans chapter 8 verses 17 and 18. If we are children of God, we have accepted Jesus, so we are children. If we remind ourselves that we are children of God, then we are heirs, heirs to God and co-heirs with Jesus. If indeed we share his suffering in order that we may also share his glory. So if we accept that we are a new creation, we are doing what he's commanded us to do, we are joint heirs with God and with Christ Jesus. And we are his children. So we can and will share in his glory. I consider that our present suffering are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Following Jesus, doing what he calls us to do, we are sure to overcome all our problems, all our difficulties. And we are free from worry, fear, anxiety. And we are free to live in the present. And we are free to suffer with grace and hope. Acceptance. Great promises which the Lord has given to us. 
So let me try and conclude. It tells us in the Old Testament, in Leviticus, it reminded us that we had to go to the priest to make an offering, a guilt offering, sacrificing an animal. We look at what the prophet Jeremiah, prophet Ezekiel, prophet Isaiah told us and help us to overcome the difficulties. The key to the new thinking and the new way we should move and go forward is our acceptance of our position with the Lord Jesus. We are a new creation. We are not condemned. We are free from any problems. If we look back over the problems, we can overcome all our difficulties. Judgment on sin, we have overcome because we have accepted Jesus. And our sins are forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Galatians 5.19 reminded us, it's a description of humanity. But remember, you have accepted Jesus. I have accepted Jesus. So we are a new creation with him. So anything that's of the flesh cannot satisfy God. But if we are in the spirit, we will overcome all our difficulties. So your new thinking, remind yourself who you are. We must remind ourselves at all times who we are. We are children of God. The glorious, and that's important, and the glorious freedom we have been given. And the glorious freedom we have been given is that we are free from condemnation. And we are living because Jesus has paid the penalty for us on the cross. And we are a new creation in Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your message, Lord Jesus. We thank you that we have seen how we should accept and do what you have commanded us to. is to love our neighbor as ourselves. We thank you for your great promise, Lord, that because we have accepted you, we are a new creation. And we are co-heirs and joint heirs with you. We thank you for your promises and what you have done for us. We pray for each and every member of the BCM family today. We pray, Lord, that you would guide each and every one. And you will help them to examine themselves. And ensure that they truly accepted you as their Lord and Saviour. Let them be seen as you have given us the command, the salt and light of the world, because you are the salt and the light of the world. Let us walk the talk and not talk the talk, Lord Jesus. We pray for our president, Lord Jesus, and all the members of our government, down to the barangay chaplain. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to guide and protect each and every one. We pray for Pastor Edgar and his family, Lord Jesus. We pray for the elders, the deacons, and the church council. Give them the wisdom and understanding so that they can continue to do what you have called them. And they can show people the new way, thinking about guilt, overcoming guilt by the acceptance of you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we pray for all our friends who are not yet saved. The importance, Lord Jesus, let us share with them how important it is so that they too can inherit God's and eternal salvation. We offer this prayer in your precious son's name, Jesus. Amen and amen. amen.